Now let's talk about follow action improvements. So this is so cool. I love this because now I can see which clips have follow actions in them. You can see in my lives that I had written out follow because I wanted to know which ones had follow actions. But now it has this changed playhead icon or changed clip launch button. And so now I know that these have follow actions on them. So new stuff in follow actions. So you can create a follow action chain. So say if I want this group of clips to all follow one another, I can go ahead and click on them and create follow action chain. And so now if I go into each clip and bring this out, you can see the follow actions look a little bit different. So it says next clip and then no action here. So we've got a slider, chance A and chance B. So it's got a 100% chance of playing the next clip. Super cool. And then same thing with the next one. And then the last clip, it basically says to jump. So that means it'll jump to the first clip. Now, if you wanna do some probability stuff, then you can do that with these parameters here and change this dial and bring it over. If you want a 50% that it's gonna play again, you know, you could just bring this uh, to 50% and it might play the next or it might play again. The cool part about the jump is that now it says it will jump to a certain scene and the scenes are labeled over here as you can see. So if you don't see it when you first pop in, you can drag out the master channel and voila, there's more information in here. So it says it's gonna jump back to scene 41. And that is the very first scene of this follow action chain that we created. Another cool thing, uh, for instance, in this song, I had to warp the clip because I wanted to use follow actions. And so now follow actions work on unwarped clips. So you can turn the warp off and let's see what happens here. And as you can see, it triggered the next clip, which is awesome. So now you can use follow actions on unwarped clips and you don't have to use up your CPU by using warp mode on these clips. You can also use it to play the clip again if you wanna loop it and don't wanna use up your CPU by pressing warp and looping there. This is really great for ambient music to do random follow actions and create some beautiful random music. Now, I just showed you the scenes, but let me show you this a bit more. So cool. Okay, so all I did was I dragged this out and now, you can see the scene number as well as the tempo and the time signature. So instead of having it in the name of the scene, you have it in this pull out box. And anything that you had labeled before, like for instance, I didn't relabel all of this stuff. It was already done for me. So when you convert from live 10 to live 11, it's gonna automatically have the tempo in here for you. And you can just go in here and say, 105, boom, you know, three, four, whatever. So really, really simple way, a lot more elegant way to work with scenes. All right, so next is a moment a lot of people have been waiting for. You can do follow actions on scenes. So I just selected this. So I just selected these scenes here. And as you can see, the follow actions pop up, boom. And we've got the same parameters. We've got the next, and we can have another action if we want it to jump or whatever. But if we go through scene by scene, it, boom, says next, next. And then the last one, we can have it, you know, jump back to the beginning or keep going to the next or whatever sort of action you want. And again, the probability stuff comes into play here as well. And there's also this action time. So it defines when the follow action takes place after the scene has been launched. So if you wanna delay it a little bit, you can do that as well. Oh my gosh, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you learned tons of new information to take your performances and your productions to the next level. 
If you're interested in other inspirations, check out the rest of our videos at the Transmute Academy and follow me everywhere at Laura Escudé. Peace.